Here at SparkFun, we love getting to work with hobbyists and engineers and even companies who use our products from initial prototyping through to final design. One of the companies we've worked with is Purple Air, and we're lucky enough to have a little bit of time to talk with Adrian over there. He's going to give us a little bit of detail about the company, about the products, and how they use SparkFun products in their development. So, very nice to meet you. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, chat with us here. Um, yes. We love your stuff over there. We love what you guys are doing. Uh, I love, the, I love the, the website. I think it's great to be able to pull back, see the entire world, and see the kind of spread that you guys have with your product. It's really cool. Yes, thank you. Tell me a little, I mean, I know what I read from your who we are, but uh, can you tell us just a little, tell our SparkFun audience a little bit about Purple Air, and how you came about? So um, back in 2015, we live um, up on a, a hill here in, in Draper in Salt Lake City, um, right near a gravel pit. And I would see dust blowing out of the gravel pit every day. And I just wondered how much dust is that? And I literally said to myself, this is 2015. There's got to be a sensor that I can use to measure it. And I couldn't find anything that was ready to go. And having a background in electronics and uh, computers, I decided to set about making one. And so that's what started all off. So tell us a little bit about that product, the air quality sensor. And uh, part of the reason that we're chatting is because you're using the Sparkman Open Log in it. And can you tell us how that came to be and how that's incorporated into it? Right. So um, we actually um, went through a couple of different dust detectors until we found the um, plant tower PMS laser counter that we're using right now and um, we built this sensor that got tested by the south coast air quality management district and scored very highly in their aq spec program which is designed to test low cost sensors so uh, once that happened and everyone um, started confirming the results testing it themselves it became uh, quite popular with a lot more educational institutions for instance um, ordering the sensor and testing it out and evaluating it to confirm the AQ spec findings. Um, then at some point, um, a customer came to us and said, hey, we want one that records data onto an SD card because we have some difficulties with Wi-Fi and uh, we want to be able to collect the data on an SD card. So we built the um, version of the sensor using the open log, which is a very convenient way of just recording everything that comes out of the serial port and then what our firmware does is it says, hey, is there an open log connected? It listens for the signal the open log sends out to say, well, there is an open log, so let's be quiet and only log data, only output data. Now, the interesting side effect of, of just putting an open log on the serial port, the open log, um, as you might know, is self-contained. It um, has its own processor and it will, it will record to the SD card anything that is sent to it over serial. So if our sensor was to crash and it outputs the crash log, we actually are recording that on the open log, which is great because normally if your processor is doing the recording or writing to the SD card uh, and it crashes, you don't have the ability to do anything on the processor. So you're not gonna be able to record the crash log. So that's like a side effect of using a self-contained separate data logger like the open log. That's great. Good. That's great. So let's see, we know, we know what the benefits are. Um, so now that you're collecting all this data from around the world, what is happening to it? What, what are users doing with this data? What are you doing with this data, this air quality data that you're seeing? So um, we actually, as you know, we're collecting the data. We're, we're letting people um, choose whether the sensor is public or private. Most people overwhelmingly choose public so that everyone else can see the data. And what happens is it's being used for all sorts of different things like, um, you know, from monitoring wood burning neighbors to, uh, you know, uh, monitoring something like a, a garbage dump that's on fire or the wildfires that are, that are now prolific in California and Australia and other places in the world. Uh, and people are using it to raise awareness to air quality. Um, they're using it to go to their city council and say, hey, this is what I'm experiencing and this is what's happening in our neighborhood. And by having data, 
they're, they've just got a more persuasive argument and, and uh, it's possible to make people stand up and listen where before they might not have. That's, that's brilliant. That's, I hadn't even thought about the city council aspect of it. That's really smart. Uh, one, of our, one of our teammates here, one of the guys in marketing just bought a new house and it's in a development area where they're still building all the time. And he said the dust over there is terrible and he, he wants to monitor it. So looks like they'll be getting his soon, nice. getting his purple air all set up. Now, I know you, I know that your the company purple air basically formed around this product. Uh, do you have any plans for future products? Any, anything new you're working on or thinking about that you can tell us about? Sure. So we're working on variations of the sensor, um, including something like a POE version, power over Ethernet, um, as well as new designs that are uh, maybe going to be easier for us to manufacture and, and also um, something that is more flexible in terms of how you can use it uh, in indoors or outdoors, for instance. So moving to like a single model instead of having two different designs. Um, and then on top of that, we're also looking at adding more of different types of sensors. Like for instance, we, we're now looking at and testing the Bosch BME 680 and 688, which are gas sensors, which detect um, gases like volatile organic compounds or VOCs. And so we will be adding more types of um, pollutants to the list as time goes on and those sensors mature and become available in a low cost form. That's great, that's great. Um, have you, I don't know if this is ahead of what's going on, but have you been contacted or have you reached out to any governments, local governments, anyone like that saying, hey, you know, looking at the data around your area, things look a little sketchy. Uh, would you be willing to work with us, to pair with us? Are there any government agencies doing that currently? So government agencies um, partner with us to deploy sensors to um, supplement their regulatory sensors. And also in places like California, there's new regulation that dictates that the uh, state and government authorities must use low cost sensors in community projects to um, bolster their monitoring efforts. So in places like California, we're rolling out sensors in partnership with um, government organizations uh, and air regulators to do just that, to, to increase the number of sensors in the community and to, to do what they call community-based monitoring. Um, and we're finding that also we, we, we try to stay neutral as well. We're not going to tell you, oh, you have an air quality problem, you should be monitoring it. People come to us and say, we have an air quality problem, we need to monitor it. And so they will, um, you know, use our sensors. And we're also not telling people, oh, that, you know, because of this, you should do that, or you shouldn't burn fires, you know, like barbecues or fireworks are bad. We want to just be uh, neutral and present the data and say, look, this is what happens on the 4th of July and uh, let people make up their own minds. That's great, that's good. I believe currently you have an indoor sensor and an outdoor sensor and people can find that and all your information right over at purpleair.com. Um, what else? Anything else you want to share with the Spark Fund people, our users? Absolutely. So, you know, I think the biggest thing about Purple Air is the community. We have a massive community of people throughout the world that deploy the sensors, that might manage them, that provide network access through their Wi Fi. And uh, as a result of that, we also have this community data set, which everyone shares with each other. So, if you're a student and you want to do an air quality monitoring project and get some data from your city, or from the state or national type of uh, data set, you have access to the data. So we have an API and we have download tools that let you download the data. And so it's important to know that that is accessible and uh, available to people that are interested in, in doing something with it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, like I said, the website is great. If, if any of you haven't been to purpleair.com yet, go over there. Just take a look at the world map and see how many of these sensors are deployed, how many people are uploading their data from their cities, their towns. It's really fascinating. You can zoom out, you can zoom in as close as you want and see individual results. It's really great. Well, Adrian, I really appreciate you taking the time out to be here with us. Yes, and uh, there's one last thing I want to leave your viewers with, and that is the role of SparkFind. Oh, yes. SparkFind is a great resource. We absolutely love you guys. I mean, to be able to get the breakout boards and the diversity of electronics that you guys provide, 
um, and also the reliability of the ordering. If you, you know, if you order something from SparkFun, it's there when they say it's going to be there. It's what they say it's going to be. The quality is great. Uh, and, you know, I've been a long-term SparkFun user even before this project. So um, SparkFun is absolutely incredible for hobbyists and also even for people like us who are manufacturing a certain quantity where you can buy in quantity and, and uh, get the supply reliably. So thank you, SparkFun. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I've, I've been a long-time SparkFun fan myself, way before I was a SparkFun employee. Nice. But that's great. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. And yes, hobbyists to companies, everybody in between. We're, we're trying to help whoever needs it out there. Very good. And uh, thank you again. Well, thank you again to Adrian and Purple Air. And if you want more information on Purple Air, the company, and the products, check it out in the description below. And let us know what you're making with SparkFun products. Until next time, happy hacking.